Hi, so back down on Dartmoor for this one. I've got, uh, we've got some family business down here that is going to need a few visits over the next few weeks. So I thought why not combine one of them with a, or at least one, maybe more with a, with a camp on the moor. I'm a bit earlier than I expected to be, courtesy of almost no traffic on the motorway. It's cool. Uh, so I'm going for a bit of a wander across the moor and then I'll look for a pitch at my uh, intended destination a bit longer. In the meantime, I'll have a wander around and see if I can find other pitches for other days. So I've been here before. It's the Nine Main. <coughs> This is the Nine Maidens Stone Circle. Legend has some story about them dancing at 12 o'clock on a Sunday. So, yeah, if you fancy coming here at 12 o'clock on a Sunday, you might see these stones or the maidens buried beneath them dancing, I guess. Right, so I'm heading over towards that little tour there on the horizon, winter tour, just to check that out. And then uh, working my way back towards higher tour. Oh, maybe that is higher tour. Hmm. We'll have a look. Maybe I've told you wrong. Maybe what I said is winter tour is actually higher tour. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, we'll see in a minute, won't us? Anyway, I'm about to get on the road towards there and we'll see quite a lot of water around uh, as you'd expect on the moor after all the rain we've had and this river here is actually the path excellent winter tour for you it's a really good view up along the valleys from here I'll get up there and uh, have a look in a minute. So first I'm going to have a wander around the base, see if there's any pitches here. That would do, just there. Let's see what's around the other side. Ah. You'll notice I haven't been doing any walk to's and walk from's. <laughs> so decided to stop that for a while. Right, let's have a look. Now this side, currently, this side is in the wind, so it wouldn't be any good. But yeah, there's a pitch, a couple of pitches. There's one here, a bit lumpy bumpy, but it would do. And so one thought I've had is that I keep going to places without checking if there are pitches. Doesn't look like it this side. What we've got here is, there's loads and loads of what's known as clitter. This is all the rocks that have fallen off up there. Right, let's get up on the tour and I'll show you the view. Right, so over there, above the horizon is Steeperton Tor, where I camped some while ago. The one below the horizon is Oak Tor. Behind that, I think it's Hanging Stone Hill, I'm not sure. Coming around this way, that one is East Mill Tor, where Lynn and I camped. And then there's High Willays, Yes Tor, West Mill Tour, which is my last camp on Dartmoor, and then Rau Tour coming around this way. You get to see, well, you would if it wasn't so hazy, <laughs> that's Devon. And up here we've got Balston Common, Balston Tour, and finally that's Higher Tour. Okay, I'm going to put my hat on, I think. I'm just hiding behind uh, Winter Tour here before I go on up. All the time I've been out here, which is about an hour and a bit, I've not seen anyone. And now there's four people around. There's two ladies, oh, six people. Several people off oak, towards Oak Tor. And a couple coming this way by the look of it. Just wondering whether to wander over to Oak Tor and back. I'll take about an hour. So, decision made then. Put the hat on. Get myself across to Oak Tor. And then work my way back this way. So it's only three o'clock. It's two hours until dark, or well, to the sunset. So yeah, I got more time than I know what to do with really. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll march on for a bit and skate out Oak Tor for pitches as well while I'm at it. 
Having said that, I did see something a while back about a guy who had his rucksack filched by a fox on Oak Tor. Is that uh, a bit of a warning, I suppose? But, you know, what's the likelihood of that, really? Unless the fox gets used to people being there. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I can't imagine that. We're on Oak Tor. This is, uh, I don't know. I always feel like this should be next to Oakhampton, but it's not. It's a nice long tour, lots of rocks. You can see there's a big deep valley that side. It's on a high ridge. And there's this huge valley down the other side. Is that, I'm not sure what it's called, something marsh. Codston Hill on the other side. Yeah, lovely. And there's Balston Tour up that way, where I'm going next. There do look to be a few pitches here. I know people have camped here, so there must be. So I'll just go and explore the other bit over there. And, uh, oh, I'll tell you, when you come out of the shelter of the rocks, the wind is pretty fierce. Oh, yeah. Let's get up here. Yeah, there's plenty of places you can put a tent for future reference for anyone. Whether you can find one out of the wind is another question. Let's get up in here. We'll have a rest for five minutes. Oh. oh, that's nice and sheltered in here, isn't it? So it's flat, but not level. Okay, I'm gonna have a rest. Put me bum on a rock for five minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll look to get back. Just short of higher tour, and you can hit these. These are boundary stones. It's actually a parish boundary goes through there. I think that says BB on there. Nothing on the little one. And this one, pretty sure that says OPB. I wonder how many people come here thinking they're ancient. Well, they're probably quite old, but they're not ancient. <laughs> Bit of a steeper climb now, up to Higher Tor. Have a look for pitches there, and then go and have a look at Belston Tor, see what's there, and uh, decide where to pitch. Uh, Say so I need to be on like the northeast side, so that side, <laughs> away from the wind as much as I can. I mean, I'm not too bothered. I got the chin up with me, so I know it'll take the wind. Right, let's get up there. So this is higher tour. This isn't quite the top. I would have split into a couple of uh, groups of rocks. It's quite a lot of clitter here. And the only flat pace I've found so far <laughs> was on the path. This would be quite a popular place for people walking, I think. But it's coming up to four o'clock now, or maybe just gone four. So there won't be many people about in the next hour. So as soon as I can find somewhere to put my tent, I'll get it up. Try and do it before it gets dark for a change, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm starting to get tired now. I have actually bought all my winter kit, which I don't honestly think I'm gonna need. Because the temperature's, well, it's way above zero. So forecast is like seven or eight degrees. So, you know, almost, well, not summer, but spring temperatures really. So, you know, the winter down jacket, and down trousers and the down booties, possibly not needed, but we'll see. We will see. Right. I'll look for a pitch. I'll come back to you when I think I've found something. Now, here's something interesting. I think we've talked about this on a previous uh, video, but you see this wall here? This is called the Irishman's Wall. And it goes back to a time when some chap, I don't know whether he was the Irishman or whether it was the Irishman who built the wall, but he started to fence off this very large piece of the commons, the moor. And the locals took against it 
And one night they came out and knocked it down. And the bloke gave up and went away, so. So here's the first, I got the tent up before it's dark. <laughs> Let me show you. There she is. In the wind a bit, but uh, as you can see, solid as a rock. Just the odd little whisper here and there. Nothing to worry about. Tucked in. So I've done my usual trick of not checking out possible sites before I got here. I did watch somebody camping over the other side. And this side is quite, it's quite a steep drop off, this side. So, and the path goes this side as well. So you're sort of, you know, in between a rock and a hard place, so to speak, anyway. So I've tucked myself down behind rocks as best, best I can. And, uh, you know, except when there's a real blast of wind, I'm fine. So it's all pegged down, guide out. I've just got to get my kit in it and then get settled in. Um, I don't know what time is coming up till sunset. We'll be, well, I, we'll be if not soon already. Right, do I have my hat on straight? Hopefully. Uh, we had the family around our place last weekend. My sister said that she thought she ought to watch my latest video before they come up. And then said that I really ought to learn to put my hat on straight because apparently it was upsetting her all the way through the video because I had it sort of like this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just for you, Rosemary, what I've done is I've worked out if I grab old both sides of the, the name tag and put it on like that, I think that makes it straight, but let me know. Okay, so I'm ensconced in my tent. Uh, it's about six, so it's half past five. Got a full moon up there, which I tried to take some pictures of. Hopefully they come out, but I, I've only got my phone and, and the GoPro, so neither of those are particularly good at this. But yeah, it's just gone half five, so I'll get a cup and have a brew. I've had a wander up to the top of the rocks here, but it's too damn cold to, in the wind, so not stopping up there. Uh, not very exciting food this time, really. Uh, so I've just got some coffee, some oxos, uh, some soup, and a part of a 24-hour ration. Oops, dropping everything here, which is a bean and pasta salad which I'll be heating up later on and then I stopped on the way and I got a couple of a couple of flapjacks I went in the services at Taunton and I thought I'll you know I'll buy the flapjacks in there and all the energy bars you know like the ones claiming to be energy bars they're all like two and a half pound up to like three and a half quid no, not having that and then I noticed these flapjacks were £1.19, but actually on sale for 75p, so quid's in there. Anyway, I'm going to get the brew on, and I'll, I'll get back to you later. Right, so I've just been relaxing for a couple of hours, watching the moon, looking at the stars, all that stuff. I think I've put a picture of my tent in the, with the moon above it. On my, on my community page, but I'm not sure because I don't really know whether it went or not, to be honest. But if it did, you probably saw that a couple of days ago. Uh, so, time for some dinner. Scran, as good bloke outdoors calls it. Uh, butter beans and kidney beans with pasta in a tomato chilli sauce. I'll try that. Thank you, Martin Williams, for that. So, I'm going to get... Try and get this into my cook pot, heat it up, and we'll see where we go from there. It's very quiet up here. I'm just over the back of Bellstone Tor, almost next to the Irishman's Wall. And so Bellstone Tor is between me and the village, Bellstone, and Oakhampton's just over the side of this ridge so basically it feels very very remote although I'm probably only what, half an hour maybe 40 minutes from uh, 
civilization. It's quite cool. You'll notice if you look carefully, or if I show you, that as yet I haven't put my uh, blow my mat up. Now, when I first started coming camping, when I first started coming doing this while camping, I did what what everybody else seems to do is set up the tent. The first thing they do is blow up their mattress, get their bed ready. And I realised, actually, not very long ago, that I mean, this is a tiny tent, effectively. I mean, I can sit up in it, no problem, which is what I love about it. And also, it's you know, I haven't got this enormous space to heat up when I'm in it either. And it's, you know, it's solid. So although it's quite small in here, it's quite big enough. But it's the same in my X-Mid 1P and, and in any other tent that I've had really, apart from possibly the X-Mid 2P, which I've only taken out once on my own. Usually take that out with Linda and I just, I just felt it was too big. So what happens, you know, with a one person tent or one of those one and a half person tents that pretends it's a two person, you blow up your sleeping mat and it fills a large proportion of the tent. So you're always sitting on it and it's getting in the way. And if you watch YouTube, occasionally you'll see people have got them like wedged up against the back of the tent. And eventually I thought, well, why do you do that? I don't need... I don't need the mat until I go to bed, really. As long as I've got this um, this thing, this foam mat, and, and in the summer we use it like an eighth, an inch, eighth of an inch foam mat, and that's fine. That stops the cold from the ground coming up. And I've got all this room, so I don't need to worry about, you know, I'm not in danger of hurting my bag or, or anything. And then when it's ready to go to bed, if I want to lie down and watch a film or something, I'll blow the mat up then. Just a tip for you. Do you need it before you go to bed? No, not really. Anyway, so I think I might, might blow my mat up and have a lie down for a bit. I might go for a wander. I mean, the moon's... Well, it's, if it's not a full moon, it's masquerading as a full moon. So I switch all the lights off, then give myself a couple of minutes and I can see well enough to walk around. So I might go and have a scout about, see what I can find or what I can see from maybe the other side of the ridge, because this side, absolutely nothing pitch black. OK, I'll catch up with you later. I had an interesting evening, actually. I was uh, out having a wander. It was a full moon, um, no, no need for a torch, really. And... Uh, four young ladies arrived. Well, actually, no, that's not strictly true. Three young ladies arrived. There should have been four of them. And they were on a night navigation exercise, practicing for their Hill and Moorland leadership qualifications. Quite cool. Um, but one of them... Um, well, this, I was chatting to three, and they were worried about where the fourth one was. They eventually did get back together. Um, fourth one was with their instructor over the other side of the hill for some reason. But yeah, good luck to them. Had a nice chat to, to the, the one who uh, gave me some tips about good places to camp on the moor. Especially the south moor, which is somewhere I haven't been yet. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, it's been raining recently. I think it rained for about an hour and a half. And the winds move around, so you can see this this side of the tent blowing in where it's um, where the wind's blowing from now. I'm not sure what, if there's anything I can do about that. So anyway, I'm fine. Uh, the wind's due to move back round later in the evening, uh, later in the night, about two, three o'clock, when it's also supposed to rain. Now the forecast rain-wise has been all over the dam shot. While I've been up here it's changed at least three times. Currently we're expecting rain at two, light rain at two, heavy rain at three, and then nothing for the rest of the day, but we'll see. 
because earlier on it was saying it was going to rain from nine o'clock in the morning. Anyway, um, I'm going to finish my brew and then I will get my head down and I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. So, actually slept really well. Got my head down about half eleven. Quite early for me, really. And then uh, woke up. Yeah, it took me a while to get to sleep, but I woke up at uh, ten past four for a comfort break. And then the alarm woke me at half past seven. So it's currently, what is it now? Ten past eight. And... I'm gonna have some, all right, I'm gonna put the kettle on, have a brew, I've got a flapjack for breakfast. Cause I'm going down to Belson Services and have a fry up down there. I'm just looking around, there's mist on top of Colston Hill, High Willows, but we're out of the mist here. We've got a hundred percent cloud cover, so there was no chance of a sunrise, which should have happened about five minutes ago. Quite a lot of rain in the night. Uh, tent soaking wet on the outside and a bit of, uh, that's not, slight condensation on the inside, as always. So anyway, I'm going to put the kettle on and have a mooch about, see what I can see, and then I'll get packed up and get on down. Just having a relax before I finish packing up and then uh, get myself down the hill. Oh, I just stepped out onto the up the ridge over there. Biting wind and quite strong. I was going to take, you know, one of these pictures of me posing on a rock, drinking me brew. But the wind kept blowing the tripod over, so that tells you how strong it is. <laughs> so I've retreated to my tent. Um, yeah, it's about 20 to 9 now. I guess dog walkers will be arriving soon. So, I'll uh, finish packing up. I've done, I've done most of it while the tea was brewing. When I say tea, it's coffee. Well, I'll tell you one thing though. The strain of keeping this hat on the right way around is doing my head in. So, I'm sorry Rosemary, I can't promise I'll carry on doing it. <laughs> Right, uh, finished my brew, clean my teeth, finished packing up, dry the scent off as best I can, get myself down the hill. And I'll talk to you uh, when I'm ready to leave. So, why do I always say that? I don't know. All packed up now, ready to go. The mist has really come down now. If I just turn you around, you can see not a lot. <laughs> so, this is where I was. Oh, blimey, wind. <laughs> Grief. This is where I was, as you can see. No trace, as always, as it should be. Okay. So, thank you, Dartmoor, once again. I've enjoyed you. Okay, I am going to wander off down that way, down off the hill. And uh, I'll catch up with you if and when I get out of this mist, maybe. <laughs> right, that's the only one you get in this time, all right. Good job I did go back because that fell off my pack. Bugger. Oh, that was lucky. I've left too much stuff on Dartmoor already, I think. So, wrap hat here somewhere. And 
Oh yeah, walking stick. Don't want to be leaving me foam mat around as well. Crikey. So here we have Belston Tour. And down there is Devon. Civilization. It's Belston Common. As you can see, Cosden Hill in the mist. But I'm sort of out of the wind here. I could have camped just over there really, but uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's sort of wild and it's fierce, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's get down this hill. So just working my way down through this Clitter Field off Balsam Common. There's uh, two ways I found of getting through Clitter Fields. One is to take, just take the line of least resistance, because that tends to be where most people go, of course. And the other one is to follow the trail of sheep shit, because the sheep know what they're doing, don't they? <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I see you on the next one, uh, which is probably going to be Dartmoor again, but we'll see. Bye for now.